Hi everyone! This week we're going to focus on Artisans of Splendidvale, which is by Renegade Games. And it's not a typical one and done game. This is a role playing game where you have four different characters with their own books and decks, and there's a lot of really cute stuff that comes to the game. So, as you can imagine, it's kind of hard to figure out what should I bake? But then this guy came along, and he's so cute! So, we're going to put on our big girl pants and try doing a carved cake that looks like this cute little guy. Let's get started! For this sculpted cake, I deviate from my usual box cake mix philosophy and made a cake from scratch. Put 340 grams of all-purpose flour, 2.5 tablespoons baking powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt in a small bowl and give it a quick mix. In your stand mixer or mixing bowl, add 2 sticks of softened unsalted butter and mix for a minute or so until it's nice and creamy. Add in 340 grams of granulated sugar and whip on medium speed for about 8 minutes until it's nice and fluffy and a light yellow color. Add 4 eggs, mixing for 1 minute between each addition. I kind of admitted this in some of my attempts and it definitely turned out better if you actually leave the whole minute in between, so I recommend taking this piece of advice. Add 1 tablespoon of vanilla extract, 2 ounces of oil to 8 ounces of room temperature milk. Add the flour mixture in 4 parts. Start with flour and after it's incorporated, add a third of the milk mixture. Continue doing this until your flour and milk are done and you should end with flour. Mix for 10 more seconds once everything's been incorporated, but then you don't want to over mix it. If you want to have exactly the same amount of batter in each pan, figure out the weight of your mixing bowl and then find the weight once the batter is in it. Subtract the weight of the bowl and divide that number by 2. So you're going to pour your batter into your pans and you should prepare these by using cooking spray and flour or I also like to put parchment paper on the bottom too which may be a little overkill. Bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 to 30 minutes until a toothpick in the center comes out clean. You have to make three batches of this recipe so that you have six cakes. However, you may only need five cakes. Let's make a chocolate buttercream. Mm. I made a double batch. Cream four sticks of softened unsalted butter in a stand mixer. Now add in one cup of cocoa powder and maybe a cup of powdered sugar, a quarter teaspoon salt, 4 teaspoons vanilla extract, 6 tablespoons heavy cream or milk. I like to add my powdered sugar gradually so, so I don't get a huge cloud of powdered sugar. I don't really like to breathe powdered sugar. Mix until it's all been combined as you slowly add in your powdered sugar. And then once it's nice and incorporated, beat on 2 minutes at medium speed until it's nice and fluffy and delicious. Back to our bear. Take a large serrated knife and level your cakes so that they're flat on top. Then start stacking your cakes. Put a few icing blobs onto a 9 inch cake board and put your bottom cake on it but slightly off center. Put a generous layer of frosting on your cake and make it nice and smooth. Grab cake number 2 and place it gently on top and ice that. You could tempt fate and continue stacking or I chose to put one support rod in the middle since I don't have to worry about destroying my cake as much. Place your cake over the stick and continue adding cake and icing until you have 5 cakes. Leave the top unfrosted. I channeled all my patience for this cake and made a huge effort to have it chill between steps. Therefore, put your cake in the fridge until it's chilled before you attempt to carve it. Once your cake is chilled, get out your serrated knives. I used a large one that I had used previously to level my cakes and a smaller trimming knife. Have your fluffy friend or a picture handy to try and get the right angles and proportions found on the stuffed animal. Do small cuts because it's much easier to cut off a bit more than to reattach cake. Once it's mostly trimmed, Take your scraps and smush them together to make cake dough. Use these globs to put the ears on your bear, the snout, and feet. You can use the dough or trim pieces of cake to add some definition to the bear's arms as well. Once you're happy with this shape, put in the fridge to get nice and chilled before applying frosting. Now that it's chilled, take your chocolate buttercream from earlier and lather it on your cake. I chose to make another batch of buttercream, however I probably would have had enough with just the original two batches. Make sure all the cake is covered and then return it to the fridge. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you hit subscribe for more videos every week. Thanks! While your icing is getting firm, roll out some white fondant. Usually I make it very, very thin, but for this aim for between an eighth to a quarter inch thick, so this so way you could carve and add details on the fondant. Put a little water on the cake and then put the fondant onto the cake. This will help it stick. Use your hand to smooth it out and get into all the little crevices. You'll need to do at least two sections of fondant. I had some spots that were uncovered and rolled out pieces of fondant to fill in the gaps. 
You can use your fingers to smooth the connections between the pieces of fondant. I need a little over one batch of marshmallow fondant to cover my bear. While it's freshly applied, use a toothpick or tools to add details onto the fondant. Use a ball tool to make indents in the fondant where the bear symbols go. There's some on the back and there's one on the head. You can also use it to add some more definition to the arms, legs, and snout. As a final but necessary detail, use a pointed tool to add short lines everywhere to give the large batches a fur appearance. Ah, now it's starting to look more like a bear. Now you want to return your heavy cake bear to the fridge to allow it to get more firm and have the fondant dry out a bit before painting it. Now we're ready for my favorite part, painting and decorating. Use edible paints, which can be made by mixing food gel with a drop or two of alcohol to give your bear some character. Start by doing the light orange areas on the ears, snout, and feet. Then you need a lot of brown to cover all the fur. You may need to dab some of the areas to make sure the paint gets into all the crevices you created by giving it fur. Now that's all coated, use a royal icing to add the nose and the eyes. The actual bear has plain brown eyes, but it just looked at me and I could tell that it wanted some more life in its eyes. So I took a little bit of fondant to make itsy bitsy circles to go in the bear's eyes. You can also use the brown to outline some of the orange areas and add more definition and shadowing around the bear's arms. For the final touch, use the lime green royal icing to pipe on the symbols found the bear. Oh look at him. He's cute and just wants to be cuddled. Hmm. Maybe if he got squished it'd be easier to eat him. Thanks for watching another episode of Board Game Bakes. It was fun getting to use all these skills I've been working on and combine it together to make a sculpted cake, but it was a little hard to cut up because it's pretty cute. So this is another version of a role-playing game. I play D&D, but haven't really tried that many other ones. So what's your favorite non-D&D role-playing game? Let me know below. Keep playing games and keep them sweet. Bye.